this particular one, we're just going to be speaking to some of our young filmmakers about international platforms, which are festivals and markets, what they go and do there, what they've expected, have they had any successes. So we're just chatting to a few of a uh, couple of them. You know, you know, it's, always, it's always a question whether, when you take a story, whether it's the best one, and you can travel all over the world, you know, um, to, I guess, to find the unique story that, that sells everywhere. I think the, the first thing you get to have to find a story that your own audience can enjoy, you know, um, and will want to watch. Um, I mean, I've pitched, I think the first time I, I pitched a shot for it, uh, the documentary, um, Luckily, my, my, sort of my character, the guy who was living in the UK, and you could expect that you know, the UK audience would be interested in someone who lives there. You know? but, but again, it, it always comes down to the story. I, I think also, I, as, as, a, um, as an African filmmaker, uh, South African filmmaker, we, we have amazing and unique untapped stories. I think that's what I really realized, is that we, we have stories that travel all over the world because of our history. And before we come from, I do believe that everyone, that people issue, I never call everyone started in Africa. So that's why they're interested in Africa. Um, so, in a way, I think the, the reception for me for my first time was great because my, 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 my project was really well received. It was a pitch, um, I got lots of interest. But again, it comes down, I think it comes down is you get to know your story and you get to understand, I guess, your story. Because if you understand and you know your story, other people will definitely understand. And always try to find um, a thing that travels. I think also, for me, what can, what can prepare you to be able to know what story to tell for, for the international world is to be able to, to understand what goes on on to the international TV. What do they watch? What are they looking for? Um, and I guess watch as many international films as possible as you can that works for that territory or for that broadcaster. But again, it comes down to story again. Just know your story, know what you're telling, and what it's all about, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, but in terms of what the world is looking for, um, for, for a film to be eligible, to be accepted at an international festival or something like that, I think, as, as a fiction filmmaker, it's how you, you know, how you tell that story. It's basically sort of the quality of your production, if I can put it. I think that's, that's paramount, but obviously everything starts from the story, so I don't want to dwell too much on the story because that's what he's already done. But I believe that um, if, if, if one's feature is going to be accepted at a world class scene, say, Hans, for example, or, or the Sundance, it, it's got to meet certain levels of quality. So I think as, as local filmmakers, when one is making their film, is in the process of creating their film, you need to pay quite a lot of attention. I have had a lot of rejections as well from my film, and I know the reason why. Um, because when I go back and do my own uh, QC, you know, do my own quality control check, I realize that there are things that I could have done better which um, uh, would have increased the chances of, of, of my film being accepted by the international market, so to speak. So there is always that element of, of, of quality in, involved. Because you can have a great story, and after that great story, you don't shoot the film properly. So at the end of the day, you know, you, you lose out. You just wasted, you know, precious time. And at the same time, you cannot have uh, the greatest DOP, the greatest sound engineer for a story that doesn't resonate with everybody in the world. So maybe if I can also take this opportunity to look at, at, at my film. My film is it's a fiction film, but uh, it is based on a medical ailment. It is based on a man who is dying because he's suffering from a certain disease that will kill him in 48 hours. So. I, it's, it's, it's a disease and, and you know, everybody gets sick in the world, so it's something that anybody can understand, whether you're from China or from wherever. 
um, it's it's something that is so easy to to understand. So yeah, thank you. Sorry. Premiered at the Toronto Film Festival in September, and basically that's last year. So basically. Once you get into that kind of festival, which is one of the top festivals in the world, you pretty much get invited to a whole bunch of other festivals. Um, because, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it's also because the film, you know, has some kind of merit, but that those festivals, yeah. yeah. So our film has, been, has really traveled quite a lot since September. So, and it's been an interesting experience. Um, I'm, one of, I'm not one of those about, I don't know what the international community is looking for. I just think, you know, at the end of the day, you have to make a film that makes sense to you. And hopefully it resonates you know, with other people. So in terms of Man on Ground, premiered in Toronto, it's shown in Lagos, Dubai, Washington, Los Angeles, the Berlin Film Festival, and then we just screened at the Brooklyn Academy of Music Arts Festival. Uh, in May, and now we're in Durban. So we've and we've been invited to Iraq and North Korea. North Korea apparently is fine. To so just take your cell phone once you arrive at the airport <laughs> is what they said. It's interesting to note that festivals look for different things. Um, what Toronto takes won't be taken by Busan in South Korea and won't be taken by the Pan-African Film Festival. So there's a wide range of festivals that target specific things. In terms of the festivals that you have attended, were you picked by the festival or did you pick which festival to submit your films to and what made you pick those particular festivals? Yeah, I think um on the documentary side, um, you, the festivals presents certain aspects. You know, you get training um, and development initiatives right, that are attached to festivals, and you get the part of the festival where you get to screen the film. I think mostly, as a, as a, as a when it says as a young documentary filmmaker, um, oftentimes, I think for me specifically, I look for training and, um, and what called this, and networking opportunities that are within the festivals. And you get through that way. Each festival sometimes, because if, if you get a concept and you get a story to, to develop, you want to go, you want to pitch your ideas to other broadcasters. I think especially in the documentary sector, you want the broadcasters to buy your product. You know? um, so you look for the pitching sessions. So the first one that I went to, which was Sheffield, I, I found out about it through a friend who was living in the UK. And, um, and, and, and that they had a pitching session, which really what the pitching session does, and it's got a meat market, that if you get a concept and you, you apply through their website and you put in your trailer and your teaser and about your project, and then they evaluate your project against many other projects all over the world because that's the starting point. If they like, because the evaluators of, of those projects is, is, is experienced filmmakers from all over the world who gets invited by the, by the festival. So um, the Sheffield Dog Fest, I think it receives over 500,000 uh, proposals and concepts on projects. That means funding from development to production to post-production or to sales agent distributors. So once you submit your project there, and if they accept it, that means your project is good enough. And, and if, you get, if, if, if they accept, that means your project can travel and it's got a story that broadcasters probably might be interested in. So I, I submitted a project there, and out of 500, so they chose 60. So one was one was, was part of those. And it's, it's a great festival because what it, what it did for me is that I, um, I got to meet broadcasters from all over the world who prior to, to the festival or prior to the film. Um, to the meat market, they'd read my proposal, they, they know what my project is all about, and what broadcasters do, they choose who do they want to see. You know, so I had a vast number of broadcasters who wanted to get to film. So I, I, this one, as I said, I had it from a friend, and yeah, NFEF actually paid for me to go to that, to that festival, because um, as part of the festival and funding.
um, NFF pays for documentaries and things to attend from the festival. So I, this was specific to that one. I, I heard from a friend, but I had to make sure that I submit my application through their application process. What about the fact that perhaps maybe also we do stand the risk of losing objectivity on our stories because if you're running your own show as a producer, as a director, and sometimes even being too involved in writing, that you're so passionate about your work, you just want to you just want to see it getting made. That really sometimes you might lose objectivity about the fact that maybe if you could get a separate person to look at it in a different way, that might give it a bit of flavor and a different texture to your story. That's just one question. And the second question is with regards to um, um, your your films and um, the, fact, the fact that mostly we all know that features in our, in our work, they we, they travel abroad first to the international market before they come home. Um, how would you compare the way that the international, the international market consumes your work and of course the hype that um, after that, your work gets home, you know? So, because we would hear that, for example, Men on Ground won awards, X, Y, and Z, wherever, and we're all excited for it to come home. And how would you compare that, the way that the international market is consumed with film, versus when it comes home? Is it equally as well received? Or have you found that sometimes you, you know, you go home thinking, this is going to be fantastic, and then you go, oh my God, they didn't receive it as well as perhaps it was received in Toronto or wherever. Have you ever experienced that? Or do you feel that, you know, it always, it's always perfect? For me, it's always a collaboration. It's never, yeah, you know, it might say written and directed by, I can want to show, but to get there, so it's the whole bunch of people. It was man on the ground, myself, Hakeem, and Fabian spent three years going through, you know, the story. So I had collaborators, even though I physically sat down to write it, it was always a collaboration. And that's what I, I like the collaboration of, um, of what film allows, you know. Um, so I like that. So there's always somebody, and you have to surround yourself with people you trust, you know, for better or for worse. So, so it's not just you going with the idea, it's a, it's a collective idea. And definitely at our company, the rule is always the story first, everything else second. So does it work for the story? So if we're having an argument, if I'm having an argument with my with my partners, we, we come back to that thing of, okay, does it work for the story? No, it doesn't work. Okay, cool. Let's move. You know what I mean? And then we don't take it personally that we, we put the story ahead of time, I mean, ahead of everything else. So I've been able to work with people like that, where the story is king. So you know, you get rid of the personal stuff because we all have, you know, everybody likes to put their idea first. Does it work for the story? No, but maybe it's, I, I, I can't give it now because yesterday I gave it. You know what I mean? You can get you can get into those. I've been in those partnerships which I never really enjoyed. So I can say like with my partners, the story is king, and it just helps us get through stuff. As we just say, is it necessary? Um, international versus local, I think it's always a tricky one. Um, yeah, it's always tricky for me. I don't, I don't have an exact answer. I know with our film, we've had, you know, we've had pretty six, I would say we've had very successful screenings where we've screened the film. I would say that um, the people who like the film, really like the film. The people who have problems with the film, the problems they have are usually the same. You know what I mean? Like it, it feels like it's the same. But I tend to focus on the people who like the film <laughs> more than the others. But I just think it's about what you want to do. We had no, sometimes, you know, somebody funds your film so you have to show it somewhere. We didn't have that with our film. Our film was, we came up with the idea, we raised the money, ourselves, we shot it in the time that we wanted to shoot it. You know, we had total control. So, but like I said, for me, the Toronto Film Festival was the best place to launch it for a whole bunch of reasons. Because it's an independent film, and more and more independent films need as much help as they can get. And, and even within the independent sector, the ones that still rise to the top are still few. You know, distributors, 
I remember we were talking to one of the top distributors and he said, look, we like your film, but if you win X award, yeah. we can pick it up. Yeah. Because by you winning that award, it allows me to go back to my guys and say, look, it won this yeah. award. You know what I mean? So even within the within the world of independent cinema, there's still a hierarchy. So festivals help you, but they're not the be all and the end all. So I just feel like audiences respond. Um, you hope they respond positively, but the role of the film festival is to profile the film and put it in a position for it to be marketed. Yeah. It's such a pleasure to have you guys in our presence there, yeah. giving us a bit more background and information on how you work and um, which festivals you've been to. It's very encouraging to young filmmakers. What I'd like to find out from each of you is um, how do you guys give back to the young filmmakers that are still trying to make it? Maybe people that have just come straight out of varsity and don't really have a platform or haven't learned enough at university to be able to apply their skills. Um, I believe in a certain sort of uh, the same or where they say don't teach, uh, don't, don't help, don't catch fish for somebody, uh, rather teach them how to catch fish. So I found myself a highly qualified professional people in my field was the DOP, the editor, but otherwise the rest, I went and, and, and um, one or two key actors there, but the rest I would just get somebody and we, we train each other develop each other, that's basically how I did it. It's time to wrap up. Thanks again to everybody for attending. I hope you've learned something and if you still need to learn more, I'm sure you can stop people at some stage. Ask Mr. B how to become a hustler. I'm sure you'll give you his tips. But thanks to everybody for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, our presentation was about, um, it was a conversation with filmmakers in the international market. So we were looking at uh, film festivals, how somebody gets their film into a festival, the procedure of getting your film into a festival, how you know about a festival, and um, the things to look out for in a festival. So I believe, Uguti, this particular workshop would be very beneficial to somebody who is, is going to make a film and they don't know what to do with the film once they've finished it. There are festivals so you need to take your, your, your film to different festivals so that people can see it all across the world, all around the world. And there are some things that you need to be aware of. Very main important issues like publicity. You need to make sure that there is good publicity for your film when you're going whether to Germany, to Hollywood, to, to Nigeria or to Canada. You need to make sure that there is a, an audience for your film. You need to make sure that there is somebody who knows about your film. Find out the TV broadcasters that will be there so that they can you can talk to them. You need to hustle. That's basically, you need to hustle, you need to find your way in and, and make sure as many people as possible know about your film. So yeah, that's, I think that is going to be very, very beneficial to people that have been in the workshop. Workshops like this are important because it is important to share our knowledge, you know. I really believe that you don't hold knowledge, you need to share it with people. And I think you can see from the panel, um, the responses from the, from the floor, that uh, people are, you know, people are interested in this aspect of our industry. How do we make film festivals work for us? How do we make them work for films? And um, for myself, I'm always willing to share, you know, the knowledge and experience. And it's been really great this morning sharing with people um, and also feedback that you get, you know, like I got this film from a young filmmaker here, which I'm going to check out. So, you know, I think it's always important the continual networking and the continual dialogue uh, between ourselves as filmmakers and people who are up and coming. And platforms like this, uh, DIFF, uh, the NFEF, you know, they allow that kind of space to happen.